My name's Soya Washington, and I'll be doing a book talk on Little and Lion by Brandy Colbert. The book is considered to be adult realistic fiction, and it was published in 2015. The main characters are Suzette, a.k.a. Little, and Lionel, a.k.a. Lion. Little's a teenage girl from Los Angeles, California. She's very excited to try new things, very outgoing, and very family-oriented. The only thing she doesn't feel comfortable telling her family is the fact that she may be bisexual. The only person she feels comfortable speaking to is her roommate, who she may possibly have a crush on. Lion, on the other hand, is Little's older stepbrother. Lion is also white, which causes a lot of issues when going out into the world with Little. People question their stance with each other, whether they're together, family, or something else. They don't understand that they have a mixed family. On top of this issue, Lion was also recently diagnosed with bipolar. This causes a huge disconnect between Little and Lion due to the fact that they were so close before she left to boarding school. Little's a young black girl from California who attends a boarding school throughout the school year. When Little's finally home for the summer vacation, she's very stressed out trying to think about her different situations both at home and at school. Finally seeing her brother for the first time after he's been newly diagnosed with a mental illness is very hard for her. She hasn't quite understood what it means to be bipolar, nor has she seen the outbreaks that he goes through. On top of this, she's coming to the realization that she may be bisexual, which is very hard for her, especially being a Jewish black woman. Thinking about all her different intersecting identities causes a lot of confusion for her and the people she loves. All the different topics discussed in the reading, things get very heated and intense quickly. Little has a hard time adjusting to the fact that her brother is now having bipolar episodes. She doesn't know what to do, and she really doesn't know what to do to help him, which frustrates her because they were so close, and now she feels like she can't do anything about it. To make things harder, Lion gets to the point in his episodes where he decides to run away. Not only is she stressed, but her entire family is stressed trying to figure out where he is. But you would have to read to figure out what happens next. Of my many favorite quotes in the book, one would have to be, Bravery doesn't always look like you think it will. And it's never too late to stand up for the right thing. This would have to be my favorite quote because I believe this meant It's never too late to stand up for what you believe in, especially when you think it's the right thing to do. When thinking about the different connections I made from the book and class discussions, I continuously thought about intersectionality and how that affects the lived experiences of Black women, specifically in this case, Little. Thinking about her marginalized identities, such as the fact that she's Black, a woman, and possibly bisexual, all has a lot to do with how she views the world and how they view her. Not to mention the fact that she's a part of a blended family, which for a long time, Little didn't understand growing up. Having a black mom and a white stepdad wasn't a lot of the things that she's seen in TV. So facing her peers and explaining that to them, along with explaining it to herself when she didn't quite understand, has a lot to do with how she views her identity. I would recommend this book to everyone but specifically people who can relate. The black community, the LGBTQ plus community, people with disabilities, whether they're physically present or not, and just allies who would love to learn more. Something really cool about this book is you get to see through the perspective of someone who isn't necessarily in the shoes of someone who's mentally ill, but has immediate family members who are. Oftentimes, you forget the type of tools it has on family members when they have close ones who are suffering from mental illness. I think it's very important to think about the impact and recognize the traumas that these different families go through, even if it isn't necessarily them who has a mental illness.